Hello there, um, good morning to you all. So, I kinda decided to record uh, some final impressions videos on several series of the fall season of 2013. Sadly, since um, these uh, since the time from October, November, and even early December, uh, my time was kind of strange because I did have stuff to do. I was engaged in a conference that took some time to get prepared. That happened in the end of October. Then I had other um, situation appearing um, and that kind of takes almost until mid November uh, so I the series that I started to or was planning to do some re weekly reviews on the full season I was unable to do it because for instance only yesterday I finished off with the last series that I was watching during all the fall season so uh, I decided to make several impressions final impressions on several series that I saw uh, or the series that I, s I think that were more, more, more interesting in this fall season but I must say that the fall season did have uh, and had uh, several series or a lot of series that were quite interesting to me but uh, I want to start this talking about a series that it was not from the fall season it started in summer season but was pro prolonged to the fall season and the series was called or titled Gifu Dodo Naoe Kanesugo to Maeda Keiji and it was a series that started to run in July of 2013 and it finished I think uh, last week or the week before and it was directed by Bob Sirahata uh, and it was written by Yasuhiro Yamagawa and the studio that produced the series uh, was Studio Dean and the series aired in TV Tokyo also, uh, the series is kind of based uh, on a work of a mangaka uh, um, named Tetsu Ohara, and he's a pretty famous person in Japan because he did several works in, uh, in the so-called historical period mangas. Uh, and this series basically is the... Um, it, accom it accompanies the friendship between Maeda Kenji and uh, Naoe Kanetsugu that were two, let's say, heroes generals of the, uh, of the, se the end of the Sengoku Jidai period and during the so uh, 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 named Azushi Momoyama period that corresponds to the period of the three unifiers, let's say Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and in the end uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu. And basically these two men lived in the later, later years of the Sengoku Jidai. The Sengoku Jidai was a historical period that roughly was 100 and years of civil war in Japan to decide who or what warlord or what clan uh, will become the next uh, ruling shogun um, and it was a very period uh, it was a very complicated period in Japan a lot of war a lot of destruction a lot of families destroyed in the process and at the same time it was during these years uh, in 1543 that the Portuguese first contacted Japan in the island of Kagoshima in the southern 
a sultan, uh, a, a small island south of Kyushu. And after that, uh, it was established the so-called Nambanboeki, the period of the Namban trade, and eventually later on, uh, the Dutch also appeared in Japan, the, the English, the, um, the Spanish, and others. But the Portuguese were the Portuguese were the first European people to contact Japan and to establish some kind of some kind of relation with the Japanese of that region of Kyushu. Obviously, the Portuguese influence it was also important because it was filled in the introduction of the fire weapons in Japan, and without a doubt, the fire weapons change the course of the story of Japan and without a doubt they propel the uh, fast um, process of the unification of the country under Oda Nobunaga first then Toyotomi Deyoshi that appears plenty in these series um, and Tokugawa Iyasu that appears near the end of the series and but basically this, this follows the friendship of uh, Maeda Keiji and Naoe Kanetsugo. Maeda Keiji was um, a military commander um, that was adopted by uh, uh, the daimyo Maeda Toshihisa. Uh, um, that was the older brother of Maeda Toshi and eventually Toshi is, uh, did lose his rule and he, he, his younger brother Maeda Toshi kind of took over under the rule of Nobunaga and Maeda Kenji was kind of ousted from power let's say and then he, he fought in several conflicts in Japan and eventually through the series he met uh, Naoe Kanetsugu. Naoe Kanetsugu, according to the series, he was the illegitimate son of uh, Daimyo Uesugi Kenshi. Um, obviously, um, I don't know if this has some historical truth or not, because what I know about Naoe Kanetsugu is yes, he was a, a general of the Uesugi family. Yes, he did serve Uesugi Kenshi. Uh, his father also had served Uesugi Kenshi, and then later on he continued serving as advisor of Uesugi Kagekatsu, that was the successor of Uesugi Kenshi. And he was a very good strategist uh, at the time, and uh, he, he is one of the great heroes of this late period. So, uh, and basically the series tells the, their adventures. The first part, roughly until the 14th episode, mainly is how uh, the first episode is the first episodes is how Maeda Kenji and Naoe Kanetsuko meet each other and become friends of each other. Then we have uh, some adventures that they are telling. The series happens a lot after this, obviously, because they are already retired uh, and this, we kind of were told the story by them that are sitting in a lake and discussing their friendship, their how they met, uh, what adventures they lived and so on, so on and so forth. So it's interesting in that way because it's kind of um, a dialogue, a conversation between them recording their younger days, but at the same time they are telling us part of the Japanese history, and I like this. Also, um, we met uh, several characters, historical characters, there are some episodes where Oda Nobunaga appears, we also have the appearance of Uesugi Kenshi, um, Toyotomi Deyoshi is always present, um, Ishida Mitsunari, a lot of historical characters of this period appear through all the series. But then, the second part of this, uh, the, this, the series that runs from 15, the episode 15 until episode 25, roughly, it's more, uh, it's not on, only focused 
in uh, the relation between um, now Waikanetsugu and Maeda Kenji, but kind of tell us the story of now Waikanetsugu and where his background, who is his father, who is his mother, um, and it's more uh, the second half of the season is more uh, out to know now I can Sugu background and his adventures also during the siege of Odavara that was the destruction of the Ojo clan of the tent region and uh, uh, then the, the situation with Tokugawa Iyasu that he found that now I can Sugu was the illegitimate son of Wesley Kenshin and we have him trying to get his hands into uh, a statue of Buddha that uh, is told to be the key to discover the secret of Naoi Konitsugu and thus to plunge the Uesugi in a civil war. So that second part I like it. I like the first half but I liked a lot of the second um, part because we yes we continue to have some historical information obviously uh, the mainly the Odavara campaign but uh, it gives more in depth to the character of Naoi Kanetsuko that was not done before in the first half of the series so this series is very interesting and if you are a fond of um, historical period stories from Japan uh, and if you yeah, and if you want to have uh, a good time watching uh, a series that in fact gives you information and knowledge about Japanese history, obviously you still need to have present that this is a novelization. Not all is historical true, but um, the historical aspects that were referred in. Uh, the series they are accurate and it was very interesting the way they show several characters from several times um, the animation could be a little easy for the ones that were not used to it because in this kind of animation the main characters usually appear or the characters that are important they appear as, like as giants and the regular, regular guy, the average Joe, it's kind of normal in a way. This is a method of giving even more importance to the character. Um, it was not a style that was used in the recent in recent years. It was used in the past, if I'm not mistaken, in the 80s and 90s. This this animation style was used, but in the 2000, not really, but this was different because of that. Then, ooh, the soundtracks, um, the second soundtrack is, in my opinion, a lot more eerie, uh, good than the first one. The first one is okay, the second one is very good, in my opinion. Um, but besides this point in the animations, the scenes, uh, how they portray the situations, how they give expressions to the characters and such, um, it was interesting uh, and it was well done. So I will say that if you want to know a little more about Japanese history of this period in the, the, half, the second half of the 16th uh, century, you should watch it, it's not uh, a bad series at all um, it, for me it's a good series uh, so watch it and you, you probably will like the characters and you will also learn a, a little more about Japanese history of this period and that makes it without a doubt worthwhile so this is it, this is my final impressions on Gifu Dodo uh, Naoi Kanetsugo to Maeda Keiji. Uh, hope you enjoy uh, the video. Uh, stay well. Peace. And finally, if I need to give um, rating, 
uh, in this series I will give it uh, from 1 to 10 uh, I will give it uh, 6 and half that's it stay well peace see you soon